So now let's consider about the common mistakes that happens whenever you whenever you define a workload. I have seen most of the time what people do is that they don't have enough data to test. Let's say for example you are testing a online retail store. In online retail store you have let's say 20,000 products. Okay. However, I have seen that people do the do this do this kind of you know test online retail store with just only 10 products in the catalog. So that means if you have less number of uh, products in the catalog, then whenever you are doing the uh, the the load test or the you know the the high high users number of test, it's most likely that there are a lot of of these uh, users are going to access one product. In simultaneously. So in that case what's going to happen is that that product whatever let's say for example product ID is equal to 1. Okay, So this product ID 1 is already there in the database cache. So that can give you a false positive. That means that can give you a good performance number actually whenever your production system when we have 20,000 20, uh, product then that time is not going to uh, work properly. You should consider to seed your database. So seed your database means pre-populate your database with sizable amount of data. Test with reasonable amount of data. My, if my production system is of one terabyte database, then my test system should also have one terabyte database. Okay. So in that way, like you know, we can figure out the real issues involving data volume. All right. And another common mistake that people generally do, they don't put any realistic delay. What do you mean realistic delay? Let's just talk about this distribution and in this activity distribution the user 1 is first checking the mail and after that he is just waiting he is just reading that mail. He is not doing any activity that time and that inactive period in performance you know, engineering called think time or delay. What is our goal here is that we need to ensure that enough realistic delay is there between two transactions from same user. Okay, And another mistake people generally do, they just put a constant think time of say 5 seconds. So that means you, you know, user 1 sends a mail and then wait for 5 seconds doing nothing and then send another mail. This is also not very realistic. Best thing would be to use some bell shaped model for interaction time. That means like if, if this is a thing like this, let's say this is a 5 and let's say this is a 15. So basically with a, anything randomly from 5 to 15 we are going to get. Like for example in one case we can wait for say 7 seconds, the next time maybe we will wait for 14 seconds and so on. Okay, So that is what I meant by uh, in realistic delay and this is basically what we are trying to do, trying to simulate what a real user will do. And the real user does not always wait for 5 seconds or does not wait for 0 seconds. Okay, it always split between a between a time between a start time to end time. And another thing that people a lot of time the mistake is steady state. So what is steady state? So let's say for example, let's consider this example. Um, say this is a timeline, and in this axis we have users. Let's say user number one logged in at time t is equal to zero. So at that time we have only one user in our system. Then at time t is equal to 10, let's say we have 20 users logged in. At time t is equal to let's say 100 seconds, let's say at time t is equal to 100 seconds, we have 50 users logged in. Okay, And after some time, okay, all users are logged in. So basically this is how this thing happened. So all users are logged in. Right? And after that, they all of them do some operation here and then they logged out. Okay, So what is happening here is that this is what is called warm up okay? or they call ramp up. Then this period is called steady state and this period is called ramp down. Okay, so in the ramp up, right, we need to ensure that whenever we design our test, we should also follow this kind of pattern. Or else, if you want to do all 100 users try to 
try to basically um, you know log in in a very less say within five second if you want to try to log in all hundred users then this may not be a realistic you know way to test your system and also during login time you will create a session and so on so therefore this little bit of intensive work on the server and if you want to ramp up up everybody in same time then you might be seeing some unnecessary errors that's going to happen okay so therefore this is the right way of testing okay so that's what I, I mean to say that have a realistic steady state window and this is the time when actually you do the measurement for the performance numbers okay and and finally uh, another thing that uh, that that you see, that I've seen a lot of time people do is that the randomized user activities. So if you see here in our distribution chart, we are doing a lot of mail, we are doing log document, then calendar, and so on. We are not doing this one kind of operation all the time. Like all those user hundred users are not sending mail at same time. Okay, and that's a lot of time people do mistake while designing the workload that they try to do everything at same time. Again, that is not realistic. You need to randomize your user activities, all right? And then, then finally, a lot of people run tests from a single location. That's a problem because nowadays with the web and all those things, your user can be from any geography, okay? And whenever you test, you ensure that you also simulate similar kind of things. Like say, for example, user one to user 50 are from one geography, let's say from US West. And say user 100 to user 200 are from let's say APAC. Asia Pacific okay so in that case what's going to happen is that if you if you run from a single location then you might get some false performance result basically you know you do not consider in consider this is the scenario that wherever that the distance between the server and the customer in that case they might see bad performance and to do that you need there are a lot of tools like uh, to consider for the network slowness and all those things so there are a lot of tools that they can they can simulate your network okay so these are the common mistakes that people generally do thank you